Hey y'all, welcome to Ms. Clark's chemistry class. There's a lot of things about gases that you're gonna need to know, and I'm gonna break it down into individual lessons. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single one. This lesson right here, most specifically about kinetic molecular theory. So go grab your notes, grab something to write with, and let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the kinetic molecular theory. Now we've said the word kinetic energy in the past, and remember kinetic, that just means movement. So the kinetic molecular theory, this is the theory of moving particles. If you've been watching the states of matter video series, then you know we've been talking about states of matter at the particle level. And so that's what we're going to continue talking about, the molecules, the particles. Now, before we go into gas laws, gas laws tell us more about what's happening. There are observations that we've made over time, and we're like, okay, this is what we expect to happen. But it doesn't explain why it's happening. The kinetic molecular theory, this is going to be the why. So when we get into start talking about all those gas laws in the next few videos, I'm hoping the why will make a little bit more sense since we're starting with the kinetic molecular theory. Again, that's the theory of moving particles. Let's kind of review back just a little bit. When we talked about the states of matter, the theory of moving molecules says that all molecules are always in constant random motion. That's going to be the first part of this theory, and I have it on the next slide. But if every particle is moving, I just kind of wanted to go back and review for just a second. So if we're talking about solids, these solid particles, they're moving, but the intramolecular forces have a hold of them so tight that the movement is reduced down to just a vibration. So these particles are just practically vibrating because the intramolecular forces won't let the particles loose and won't let them move around. If we're talking about liquids, their molecules can spread out. The intramolecular forces are still there. They keep the molecules together. They don't allow these liquid molecules to just fly off into space but not strong enough to where the movement of the particles, the kinetic energy, the kinetic energy is allowing these molecules to have just a little bit more movement than they did in their rigid solid shape. And since these molecules are allowed to gain a little bit more energy, they can kind of flow past each other and move around. So even though we don't have these molecules flying off into space, they are allowed to flow amongst each other. That's the result of the intermolecular forces fighting against the kinetic energy. Now, in the gases, the gases, there's hardly any intermolecular forces between the particles. So there's really nothing to grab these particles and hold them together. So the kinetic energy, the movement of these particles is allowed to get very great. And so we normally draw that with vector arrows to show that these molecules are in constant random motion. And it's because there's no intermolecular forces grabbing onto the other molecules to anchor them down. Like in the solid and the liquid, the gas particles, that energy is just allowing those particles to move all over the place. Okay, so that takes us directly in the middle of the first part of the kinetic molecular theory that gas molecules are in constant random motion. They're in constant random motion, and then when they hit the side of the container, they're gonna bounce off. So they are just moving everywhere. The kinetic molecular theory, one problem with this that I forgot to mention at the beginning. These are things that we hold true for ideal gases. Ideal meaning they're following all the rules all the time. And in chemistry, we know there's tons of exceptions to every rule all the time. So while there are a lot of gases that do behave ideally in all of these postulates, all of these parts of the kinetic molecular theory hold true, in real life, in some situations, not all of the gases follow all of the rules all at one time. I just kind of wanted to point that out before we went farther. Okay, so number one, gas molecules are in constant random motion. Number two, we say that gases have negligible volume. And that's just because if we have our container and then we have our gas particles, whether these be atoms, molecules, the one thing that I'm wanting to point out is oftentimes when we draw gas molecules in containers, they just kind of look like marbles. Well, 
these gas particles are so, so, so tiny, especially compared to the container that the gas is in. Since the particles are so small, the volume of the particles related to the volume of the container, vastly different. Another way of thinking about this, the space between gas particles is so vast compared to the space that the molecule is occupying. If you have a jar and it's airtight, and the moment you break the seal, it fills up with air. That doesn't mean you can't still put your juice in it. You can still fill juice all the way to the top. So even though when gas and air fills a container, we still consider it to be empty. And so that's where we get this second rule that gas has negligible volume. We hate to say no volume because there is particles. Particles are matter and matter has volume. But again, the amount of space that the particles take up in relation to the space of the container, very, very negligible. Number three, the gas particles have no attractive and or repulsive forces. So these particles, they're in a container and remember, they're constantly moving. So gas particles are just going all over the place. Being that there are no attractive forces, that just means these gas particles, they're not just going to bunch up somewhere and make little clumps of gases because they're not attracted to each other. Also, when two gas particles get close to each other, they're not gonna send each other the opposite way because they're not, there's no repulsive forces either. These particles just randomly bounce around, not being attracted or repulsed by each other or the sides of the container. They're literally randomly bouncing around. Also, these gas particles are flying past each other so fast, they don't even have a chance to feel a slight attraction or repulsion. Number four, collisions are elastic. So we keep talking about these gas particles. They're bumping around into each other. They're bumping around into the side of the container. If you're running down the hall because you're late to class and you run into a buddy, y'all both kind of slow down and you kind of look at each other and you're like, hey, whatever. And then you keep on going. That's how collisions normally happen. You collide, you lose energy, you slow down. It takes a little bit to get going again. That is called an inelastic collision where energy is lost. An elastic collision is where two things can bump into each other and they don't slow down. So these gas particles are able to bounce into each other. They're able to bounce off the side of the wall or their glass container and they just keep going off in a different direction. They don't lose any energy. It kind of makes me think of those like super rubber super balls. You know, if you take a couple and you go into a small room and you throw them really hard against the floor and then they just go crazy like ping pongs. That's exactly what we're talking about here. Even though eventually those are going to lose energy. That's not a true elastic collision, but it really does come close. So these gas particles are gonna keep colliding with each other. And you know, these collisions, these collisions, this is how we get pressure. If you kind of stop and think about everything we've talked about and you think about pumping up a tire with air, well, if it's mostly empty space, because the gas particles take up so little volume that we consider it to be volume is negligible, then how can we pump up our tires so much that our car can drive over the road? That is because of air pressure. The pressure is happening because of all of these collisions. If we have trillions of gas molecules in our tire and they are all moving so very quickly. They're moving, they're making collisions, they're colliding. Every single collision that a gas molecule has, it exerts pressure. Okay, we've got one more part of the kinetic molecular theory. Kinetic energy of gas particles is proportional to the absolute temperature. If we're talking about gas particles and constant random motion, that motion is called kinetic energy. Well, that energy is directly proportionate to the temperature. Basically, we're saying the hotter the temperature, the faster the motion. If we're heating particles up, they're going to move faster because they're gaining kinetic energy. When particles start moving faster because of temperature change, that's kinetic energy. So we can say that temperature and kinetic energy are directly proportionate. Also, this is how thermometers work. So thermometers, you know, they have all this red alcohol particles. This used to be mercury back in the day. And we've got all this alcohol particles. That's what's gonna travel up our thermometer. Okay, well, let's say that our thermometer is sitting in ice water. 
So we've got all these this cold particles around. Well, these cold particles are going to make our alcohol particles here move pretty slowly because the kinetic energy is going to be low because the temperature is low. But if we move this thermometer over and we introduce it to more hot, more hot, more hot, we're heating things up. Well, as we're heating things up, these gas particles are also starting to heat up and they're moving faster, faster, faster. Well, if you have particles and they're in an enclosed area and they start moving faster and faster and faster, they're gonna look for a way to exit. And so these particles, they're getting more energy, more energy, and they're traveling up the tube. So when we increase the temperature, we are also increasing the kinetic energy of the particles. The kinetic molecular theory, it explains the motion of gases. You're gonna to need to know all five parts, so make sure and be prepared for that. Where's the math? It's coming. Stay tuned for those videos. Until next time, bye y'all.